Chapter 5. Harmonious Space The Republic Hotel was near the exact spot where the railroad track, which at one time functioned as a kind of artery, punctured Tucson's old creaky chest cavity, and prepared to enter the complicated oracles and ventricles of the railroad station. In the old days, I suppose it would have been bringing the city a fresh load of life, like a blood vessel carrying platelets to circulate through the lungs. Nowadays, if you could even call the railroad an artery of Tucson, you would have to say it, it was a hardened one. At the point where it entered the old part of downtown, the train would slow down and let out a long, tired scream. Whether the whistle was for warning the cars at the crossings up ahead, or just letting the freeloaders know it was time to roll out of the boxcars, I can't say. But it always happened very near 6.15, and I came to think of it as my alarm clock. Sometimes the sound of it would get tangled up into a dream. I would hear it whistling through my sleep for what seemed like days, while I tried to lift a heavy tea kettle off a stove, or once chased a runaway horse I was carrying off Turtle while she hollered bloody murder, something I had yet to hear her do in, her, in real life. Finally, the sound would push out through my eyes, and there was the daylight. There were the maroon paisley curtains made from an Indian bedspread. There was the orange-brown stain on the porcelain sink where the faucet dripped. There was the army cot where Turtle was asleep, safe and sound in the Republic Hotel. Some mornings, it was like that. On other days, I would wake up before the whistle ever sounded and just lie there waiting, feeling that my day couldn't begin without it. Lately, it had been mostly this second way. We're in trouble. We were in trouble. I lasted six days at the Burger Der before I got in a fight with the manager and threw my red so-called jockey cap in the trash compactor and walked out. I would have thrown the whole uniform in there, but I didn't feel like giving him a three show. I won't say that working there didn't have its moments. When Sandy and I worked the morning shift together, we'd have a ball. I would tell her all kinds of stories I heard about horse farms, such as the fact that the real high-strung horses had TVs in their stall. They were supposed to lower their blood pressure. Their favorite show was old reruns of Mr. Ed. I would tell her with a poker face. No, you're kidding. Are you kidding me? And I hate the commercials for Knox Gelatin. She was easy to tease, but I had to give her credit, considering that life had delivered Sandy a truckload of manure with no return address. The father of her baby had told everyone that Sandy was an admitted uh, schizophrenic and had picked the same name out for the high school yearbook when she found out she was pregnant. Soon afterward, the boy's father got transferred from Tucson and the whole family moved to Oakland, California. Soon after the boy's father got transferred from Tucson and the whole family moved to Oakland, California, Sandy's mother made, had made her move out, and she lived with her older sister, Amy, who was born again and made her pay rent. In Amy's opinion, it would have been condoning sin to let Sandy and her illegitimate son stay there for free. But nothing really seemed to throw Sandy. She knew all about things like how to rub an ice cube on kids' gums when they're teething, and where to get second-hand baby clothes for practically nothing. We would take turns checking on Turtle in Seattle, and at the end of our shift, we'd go over to the mall together to pick him up. I don't know how... I don't know, she'd said real loud, hamming it up while we waited in line at Kid Central Station. I can't decide if I want that Lazy Boy recliner in the genuine leather, or the green plaid with the stain-proof finish. Take your time to setting, I said. Sleep on it and then come back tomorrow. Turtle would be sitting wherever I had set her down that morning, with each hand locked onto some ratty, punked-out stuffed dog or a torn book or another kid's jacket, or eyes fixed on some empty point in the air, just the way a cat will do. It's as though they live in a separate universe that takes up the same space as ours but it's full of fascinating things like mice or sparrows or special TV programs that we can't see. 
The Kid Central Station was not doing Turtle any good. I knew that. After 60 days, the Burger Derby manager, Jerry Speller, was a little twerp who believed that the responsibility of running a burger joint put you a heartbeat away from Emperor of the Universe. Said I didn't have the right attitude, and I told him he was exactly right. I said I had to confess I didn't have the proper uh, reverence for the Burger Derby institution. And to prove it, I threw my hat into the Mighty Miser and turned it on. Sandy was so impressed she burned the french fries twice in a row. The fight had been about the Burger Derby uniform. The shorts were pra were actually, weren't actually actually plastic, it turned out, but cotton polyester with some kind of shiny finish that had to be dry clean. 325 an hour plus celery, and you're supposed to pay for dry cleaning your own shorts? My one regret is that I didn't see much of Sandy anymore. Natra had to find a new place to eat breakfast. There were half a dozen coffee shops in the area, and although I didn't really feel at home in any of them, I discovered a new resource. Newspapers. On the table, along with their gritty coffee cups and orange rinds and croissant crumbs, people often left behind the same day's paper. There was a lady named Jessie with wild white hair and floppy rain boots who would dash into restaurants and scrounge the leftover fruit and melon rinds. It's not to eat, she would explain to any and everybody as she clumped along the sidewalk, pushing an interesting smelling shopping cart, shopping cart that had some point in history belonged to Safeway. It's for still ice, she told me. She painted nothing but Madonnas. Orange peel Madonna, Madonna and child with strawberries. Together, we made a sort of a mop-up team. I nabbed the newspapers, and she took the rest. Looking through the want ads every day gave new meaning to my life. The four rents, on the other hand, were a joke as far as I was concerned. But often there would be ads looking for roommates, a possibility I hadn't considered. I would circle anything that looked promising, although people seemed unbelievably picky about who it, they intended to live with. Mature responsible artist or grad student wanted for cooperative household responsibilities, shared, sensitivity, a must. Female vegetarian, non-smoker to share harmonious space with insightful vir uh, Virgil and Cat. I began to suspect that sharing harmonious space with insightful vir Virgo might require even greater credentials than being a licensed phlebotomist in the state of Arizona. The main consideration, though, was whether or not I could locate the address on my sun train maps of all the various bus routes. At the end of the week, I made up my mind to check out a couple of possibilities. One ad said, among other things, must be open to new ideas. The other said, new mom needs company. What? Own room? Low rent? Promise I won't bother you. Kids okay. The first sounded like an adventure, and the second sounded like I could I wouldn't have to pass a test. I put on a pair of stiff clean jeans and braided my hair and, and gave Turtle a bath in the sink. She had acquired clothes of her own by now, but just for old time's sake I put on the darn I'm good t shirt from Kentucky Lake, just for luck. Both places were near downtown. The first was a big old ramshackle house with about 12 kinds of wind chimes hanging on the front porch. One was made from the silver keys of some kind of musical instrument like a flute or clarinet, and even turtles seemed interested in it. A woman came to the door before I even knocked. She let me inside and called out the perspectives here. Three silver earrings, a half moon, a star, and a grinning sun dangled from holes in her left ear so that they clinked when she walked like some human form of a wind chime. She was barefoot and had on a skirt that reminded me of the curtains in my room at the Republic. There was no actual furniture in the room, only a colorful rug and piles of pillows here and there, so I waited to see what she would do. She nested herself into one of the piles, flouncing her skirt over her knees. I noticed that she had thin silver rings on four of her toes. Another woman came out of the kitchen door 
uh, through which I was relieved to see a table and chairs. A tall, thin guy with a hairless chest hunkered in the, at another doorway for a minute, rubbing a head of orange hair that looked like a wet cap. He had only those beachcomber-type pants held up by a fake rope. I really couldn't tell how old these people were. I kept, I kept expecting a parent to show up at another doorway and tell it beach blanket bingo to put on a shirt, but then they could have been older than me. We all settled down on the pillows. I'm Faye, the toe ring woman said, spelled F-E-I, and this is Laisha, and that's Timothy. Yet excuse Timothy, he used caffeine yesterday and now his homeostasis is out of balance. I presume they were talking about his car, although I was not aware of any automotive uses for caffeine. That's too bad, I said. I wouldn't do anything with caffeine but drink it. They all stared at me for a while. Oh, I'm Taylor. This is Turtle. Turtle? Is that a spirit name? Leisha asked. Sure, I said. Leisha was a thick body with broad bare feet and round calves. Her dress was a sort of sarong, printed all over with black and orange elephants and giraffes. And she had a jungly looking scarf wrapped around her head. And to think they used to stare at me for wearing red and turquoise togethers. Drop these three in Pittman County and people will run for cover. FEI took charge of the investigation. Would the child be living here too? Well, right, we're set. That's cool, I have no problem with small people, she said. Laisha? Timothy? It's not really what I was thinking. In terms of... But I, I can see it happening. I'm flex on children, Laisha said after giving us some thought. Timothy said she... Uh, said he thought the baby was cute, and asked if it was a boy or a girl. A girl, I said. But I was drowned out by Faye's saying, Timothy, I really don't see that that's an issue here, she said to me. Jen, there's not an issue in this house. Oh, I said, whatever. What does she eat? Leisha wanted to know. Mainly whatever she can get her hands on. She had half a hot dog with mustard for breakfast. There's another one of those blank spells in the conversation. Turtle was grumpily yanking at a jingling bell on the corner of a pillow, and I was beginning to feel edgy myself. All those knees and chins at the same level. It reminded me of an extremely long movie I had once seen about a, an Arabian sheik. Maybe Laisha's an Arabian, I thought. She looked very white, with blonde hair on her arms and pink rims around her eyes. Possibly an albino Arabian. I realized she was giving a lecture of some kind. At least four kinds, different uh, kinds of toxins, she was saying. More to the room in general than me. Her pink rimmed eyes were, staring, were starting to look inflamed in a hot dog. <clears throat> now she was definitely talking to me. Were you aware of that? I would have guessed seven or eight, I said. Nitrates, said Timothy. He was gripping his head between his palms, one on the chin and one on the top, and bending it from side to side until he could hear a little pop. I began to understand about the unbalanced homeostasis. We mainly eat soybean products here, Faye said. We're just starting a soy milk collective. A house requirement is that each person spend at least seven hours a week straining curd. Straining curd, I said. I wanted to say flaming nerd, raining turds. It isn't raining turds, you know, it's raining violence. Yes, they went on in this abnormally calm voice that made me want to throw a pill at her. I guess a child, turtle, I guess? Turtle, I said? I guess turtle would be exempt, but we would have to make adjustments for that in the kitchen quota. I had trouble concentrating. Laisha kept narrowing her eyes and trying to get Faye's attention. I remember Miss Hodge with her shakes, always looking like she was secretly saying, don't do it to somebody behind you. 